Welcome back to the Kaleidosphere, a Dungeons & Dragons play podcast. I'm your Dungeon Master, Nathan. Joining me once again is Grant. Zachariah Heros and my band of definitely real people who have skin. Join us in part two of this interlude of our first campaign, To Whom the Sea Belongs. Uh, beginning next week, we will be the Sanity Damage podcast. Same campaign, same story, same characters, just under a new name, so... Don't get thrown off by that change just in the intro. That's the last time you will hear me say Kaleidosphere. Um, also, I want to mention Fan Roll Dice is our sponsor. Uh, they're awesome over there, so go buy their dice. Grammarians will appreciate that I just used three forms of the word there. <laughs> FanRollDice.com is where you can go and do that. They have amazing uh, enamel dice. They have, uh, what do you call them, liquid core dice that have like beautiful sparkly stuff inside the die itself uh lots of really great products so go over to fanrolldice.com to check out all of that use the code homebrew to get 10 percent off anything that you purchase there um last week on uh, the kaleidosphere on formerly the kaleidosphere zachariah you traveled uh, south away from your party uh having parted with them at uh, uh after the uh, totem of tagal uh, you've done battle with gnolls along the way, you have been infected with bone rot, but you have also swelled your ranks to something like 12 skeletons? Let's see here, I currently have... <clears throat> I lost a couple during that fight. Right, sacrifices were made. Uh, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I have 11 zombies right now. Nice. Uh, well, not all zombies, right? Like half zombies, half skeletons? Yes, correct. Okay. And uh, you re-arrived at Imaknop, the uh, Rinian in town where you hunted the Lycanthrope in the past. The Lycanthrope who is now in your ranks, uh, Vengeance, the skeleton now. You uh, were uh, greeted un uh, kind of hostily by the local uh, Imaknopi who were frightened of your skeletal companions. Mm. But a uh, pirate by the name of Edward Rackman has agreed that uh, he will make sure that your skeletons don't cause any trouble in town and is willing to give you passage toward Rixport, although he's unwilling to go all the way to uh, the actual dock for um, kind of political and territorial reasons that he's happy Pirate to discuss. Reasons. <laughs> Pirate reasons. <laughs> that he's happy to discuss in more detail later on, if needed. And that's where we're picking up. It is a little bit past sunset. Um, and your your skeletons are just kind of sitting in a circle in the field outside of the town, which is still kind of terrifying, even if they're not actively attacking the town. The, the, I, I just I don't agree with the narration in my head right now. <laughs> uh, I, I imagine Edward Rackman is like <laughs> explaining to his first mate like what happened. Like I don't. I mean, it's not that terrifying. I can assure you that no uh, diseased gnolls will attack your city while my crew is outside um i, I su suppose that that's a um a, a silver lining i, I suppose a, a good way to look at it one of the town guards will say and edward rackman will nod and he'll say Arr, so i'm sorry i can't remember did you give him your actual name uh zachary harris yes yes okay. i believe i did Yar, well, i was completely honest with you about everything right right of course zachariah um and he'll kind of thump you on the shoulder again i clatter a little bit <laughs> we 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 sail at first light, though. Uh, if you are um, willing to part with some coin, uh, you might talk me into sailing uh, before first light. Just need to round my crew up. Uh, I w did. We have any offer of reward when we helped this town, which is called Imiknap. Imiknap. Was there any promise of reward, or was it just uh, we were just helping? Um, I think I'm just going to go talk to the, uh, the the sheep farmer and let them know that their problem has been solved. Okay, yeah. And let them know. Let them, uh, just just so that you know, uh, I, I, I do need passage off here. I'm not asking for a large reward, but I do think the town could pitch in and uh, pay Mr. Rackman here my, my passage so that we can leave post haste. I feel like that's best for... All parties involved, you do not want me here. I mean a moderate amount of offense, but I would like to leave also, as I do not feel welcome, and I am sure... I mean a moderate amount of offense. 
<laughs> yeah, so you head over to that sheep farm and Gangly the Teen is slouching as he is wont to do on uh, his um, fence watching his sheep. Um, and uh, his his parents will see you. They're, they're fairly amenable to your request. They part with... Uh, they're, uh, they part with seven copper pieces for you as, as your reward, and uh, they offer a uh, sheepskin cloak as well. I appreciate that. I think this will look very ironic on vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who, who's vengeance? Oh, a uh, yeah, friend I made along the way. <laughs> really the true meaning of this adventure so far. The true, the true meaning, indeed, indeed. All right, well... I suppose best off we did then. We we thank you. We haven't had any problems with our sheep since uh, in the past week or so. I know you haven't. <laughs> Do you have a harbor master or a dockman or who handles the comings and goings of ships here? Because I need to leave a note. Uh, we do not actually have a harbor master or a dockman. Our town is incredibly small. Okay. I suppose you could talk to the um the shaman or the captain of the town guard. Uh, I don't feel like the captain of the town guard is going to... Gangly, come here. You... Oh, okay. I have a job for you. Oh, uh, why? Why? <laughs> why do you... <laughs> because I helped you. Okay, well, if I if I do a job for you, um... And he kind of narrows his eyes. Seven copper pieces. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst. Why do people do this work? I thought adventuring was like a common activity... In the world, this seems terrible. I was welcome when you needed me. Uh, nothing much exciting happens around here except for sheep getting stolen. Yeah, that doesn't even happen anymore, does it? No. Or it hasn't in a week or so. Who's to say about the future? Uh, okay. Um, is there an inn in town? There is. I'm trying to find the map of Imiknop. It looks like I deleted it. I mean, everyone talks to the innkeeper, so I'll... I will leave this note with him. Basically, I want to leave a note with the innkeeper... Uh, to Elizabeth's Elizabeth Chance uh, that is basically an IOU on her behalf for the 150 pounds of lumber and the spools of wool that I had loaded onto her boat before we left. Okay, so you're saying that she owes you for your hanging on to that. Say that again? You're saying that she owes you for hanging on to that? I would just like that those things back if possible. Right. I hope they didn't dump them. I don't know how this works. I honestly have no idea. <laughs> I I have zero clue. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming that she left town, actually. Yeah, yeah I mean, as you can see, I, I found the map and I popped it out here for you. There's literally only one uh, pier um, at present. You can actually see there are three large pirate ships moored on the pier. But uh, that being the case, the pier is very crowded and doesn't really have room for anything else. But Got the pier's it. also right next to the inn, so your instinct to kind of talk to the innkeeper there is probably a good one. <clears throat> yeah, basically just a, a ledger, an accounting of the things that I have on her boat, and I'm sure that she will keep them safe and sound for a modest storage fee and won't dump anything overboard. Right. Um, and then I'll leave a, I'll just leave a note for, um, uh, well, man, how do I, I'm not going to, never mind. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't. I have no idea who's out there and what's going on. Uh, and then, okay, what else? I, I need to notify the town guard of the diseased gnolls and that they are attacking with increasing force and brazenness is what I will call it. Okay. Uh, attacking in daylight, attacking large groups. Uh, I mean, I was a group of 13 and they attacked us. I can't imagine they have many like parties out in the woods that are going to be much larger than that so they are not safe uh they need to be very fucking careful yeah uh when you tell that to the town guard um the guardsman it's the same one that first saw you when you approached from the northwest uh he will say well thank you for uh bringing this to our attention i i'll definitely keep an eye out for them i appreciate you letting us know that we do have a powerful archdruid in the woods to the north who usually kind of takes care of that sort of thing, so I imagine that Yontor will uh, look after the forest as uh, as he has been charged with doing. So Excellent. I'm certain he will. Appreciate it, but I'm not too worried about, about them reaching this far south. Yeah, no, he will keep this place very safe. Um, 
I am positive. Regardless, thank you for uh, letting us know this. Jan Tor. I scribbled down some notes. <laughs> and is there... It sounds like you've got all your affairs in order, but is there anything else you need to do before setting out with Edward Ragman? No, I mean, I have an urge to leave a note for my crew, but I guess I had never thought of people out there looking for them before, so I'm going to not do that and head out, and I'm going to give Edward the necessary coin so that we can set sail tonight. All right. Remembering my decision to let Elizabeth stay overnight and go out into the woods and (laughs) (laughs) Uh, thinking it's best we just go. All right. So he's going to ask 30 gold pieces to compensate his crew for rounding them up from the end on uh, such short notice. Yep. I give him uh, 30 gold pieces and pocket the seven copper, cut my losses. All right. Perfect. Um, and so he, he rounds up his crew. His crew is actually um, probably almost 70 pirates and scalawags. So they all kind of pile out along the pier singing uh, sea shanties as they get the ships ready to go. It's high tide, so they do need to wait for about 90 minutes before they can actually get out of the bay. But um, as soon as they are able to, they do so. The When they set sail, it's actually all three pirate ships that were moored. Okay. Captain Rackman is a commander of a small armada, it would appear. I don't know if this is an armada. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> you can see painted on the like prow of each ship, they are called the... Uh, uh, the flagship is called the Yorkie Plunder, and then the other two ships are called the Yorkie Storm and the Yorkie Reef. Interesting. Am I on the boat that Edward is on, or am I on one of the satellite boats? You are on uh, the flagship boat with Edward Reitman. Um Yeah, so you set out. A uh, few of the pirates uh, stumble below decks to uh, take um, take a shift, or to rather let the other pirates take a shift while they sleep, and they'll cycle out later. Uh, Edward is at the wheel, kind of sitting on a barrel. He's There's not much steering to do. You get to open ocean pretty quickly. Uh, you can converse with him, or you can just kind of go about your your business. I will say the the crew are a little bit unnerved having some skeletons on board, but they uh, the skeletons are non-combative, and so the crew are willing to kind of cautiously cohabit the space. Sure, you can throw a tarp over them or something, if that makes you feel better. They can have some quiet time. They could use some rest, honestly. Sure. Um, You said uh, Edward Raymond, right? Uh, no, uh, Rackman. Rackman. Oh, is that a, is that a common surname? Is that it's pretty common, I imagine. That's a pretty Nar- common surname that many people share. Narn. It's, uh, don't be that common, no. Ah, um, well, uh, do you have a, uh, like a wizard on board? I don't know how a pirate, I mean, I'm sorry, that's probably not a good word. Uh, you know, I don't. Yar, we be pirates. Okay, pirates, cool. And I'd be terrified. So, um, do Yarn. you have a, like, a wizard? Is there, like, a, a boat wizard? What's a boat wizard in pirate land? Uh, Yar, my, uh, me, me first mate, uh, knows some oh. spells. Okay, I'm a first mate then. I'm a boaty wizard. We call ourselves the first mates. Oh, um, oh, no, 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 no. I, I thought you were no. asking if I already did have someone. I do. My my, me first mate, the captain of the uh, Yorkie Storm, uh, he uh, he knows some magic, he does. Um, oh, he's not on this boat. No, no, he captains the Yorkie Storm. Okay, excellent. I just, I had a small uh, need of a spell, and I was curious if someone might know it, but that's okay. I guess... Well, I can I can shout out. That would be a little awkward talking. I mean, how far away is it? They're probably 120 feet away from each other. Okay. Uh, okay. I, Nathan, am not quite familiar with how far away boats need to be from one another for, like, smooth sailing, but just purely going from, like, Pirates of the Caribbean, I think 120 to 240 feet. Okay, well, that's not a that's not a huge concern right now. Um, so what's, what's going on in the world? What's the state of things? Have you had any news from... Oh, Ricksport, or I don't know, maybe like Cliffs Bay, or other places. Anything exciting going on? Well, Yar, last I heard, Cliffs Bay kind of went in the shitter. Oh, oh no. What's happened? 
Oh, I, I don't know. I just, um, I don't know details. I've just heard that ships have gone missing. I think that Taiyang and uh, Westanica have gone to war over, over the colony. Oh, shit. Yar. The, they, they've gone to war over Cliffs Bay? Uh, Yar, I mean, they've been, they've been at war for quite some time, but now it's more, I don't know if I would say official, per se. I don't know if declarations have actually been made, but, um, you know, it's, it's one of those situations where everyone kind of knows it, even if they haven't dotted their I's and crossed their T's. Right. Interesting. Um, I've not had a war in my time here before. That's interesting. What... So what, if you don't mind my asking, why do you, why are you looking for, uh, uh, people? Who would you say you were looking for? Yeah, I, I'd be looking for my, me friend, uh, me son, actually, uh, Jack Rackman. Um, he, I, not, not son by blood, I suppose. He's, uh, rather adopted. He sailed with oh. me for some time back when, uh, me crew and I were only one ship. Mm. Did he have a, uh, ship of his own, or...? No, not not at first. Uh, eventually, he he got his own ship. Uh, when he did, he set out from me for a little while. Wasn't me happiest moment, but I understand a son needs to step out from the shadow of his father. Gave him a few years to sail on his own, hoping that he would uh, come back and uh, rejoin our uh, burgeoning armada here. Sure. Yeah, but I I heard that his ship uh, wrecked. I haven't heard from any of his crew in some time, so I'm. Just hoping nothing terrible has happened to him and that uh, he's alive and well. I I hope that also. Um, where were you supposed to meet with them? Or how, I guess, how did you, how did you track him to Imic? Nah, also, I, I have, I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize. That's out, out of line. Um, so we're going to, we're tracking him to Rixport. And, and then what? What's next for you, Eduardo? Well, I, myself, can't uh, get too close to Rick's port. It's owned by uh, Thousand Tooth Tom. He and I don't see eye to eye. Mm, I can agree with that. Um, so, I'm sorry. I, just pardon my, my lack of business uh, savvy here, but you are going to need me to check everything for you in Rick's port. You're not coming all the way with me. You are correct. All right, well, my fee is going to be 30 gold and 7 copper, just for the record. <laughs> um, hmm, we can, we can arrange something for sure. <laughs> now, you, you said you were, uh, you were looking for Jack Rackman as well. Why, uh, why might you be doing that? Oh, Ethan, um, er, you seem like... Uh, Ed Edward. A, that's what I said. You seem like a good person, um... And I, I don't know. Uh, I see a bit of a, see a bit of sun in you. I just want you to know, I was not completely honest with you, and I can't, you know, I can't tell you everything that's happened because we haven't been together for some time. But I do want you to know that uh, Jack is is safe, and he is a fine sailor. Uh, he's 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 certainly alive. I just I don't know. I just want you to know that I I did travel with him for some time. And I found him great company, powerful, and he's fine. Uh, your your boat is not. That's gone. But he is fine. Yar, well, you know, boats can be replaced. I am uh, glad to hear that he's doing well. But if you if you know him, I mean, and you bodies know can be replaced too. Let's <laughs> let's be clear about my profession here. Uh, sorry, what were you saying? Wait, uh, what what is your profession? I don't believe we covered that. Oh, <laughs> I figured the. My, my crew kind of gave that away, but um, ideally... You're a necromancer, are you? I, I don't care for the baggage that that word carries with it, but I consider myself a purveyor of ethical necromancy and labor reform. Hmm, hmm. I see, I see. Well, you you say you know that uh, Jack is safe. Uh, you, you asked how, how I tracked him to Imiknop. I, I chanced across one of my old associates, uh, Elizabeth Chance, on the open ocean, and... Uh, she she directed me. Did she have some wood with her? I mean, she was on a boat, so yar. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, through uh, through conversation, through catching up, uh, I figured I would uh, go to Imiknop see if uh, if Jack had come back from the forest yet. But uh, you say you traveled with him. You say he's safe and well. So I imagine he's likely not in Rigsport then, after all. Oh no, I was being 
honest about that we are meeting at Ricksport. Uh, make a deception check. For my um, conscience's sake, listeners, I have to get to Ricksport. I know I'm lying to a father, but I tried to give him some comfort also. Ah, oh, fuck. I rolled an eight. He also rolled an eight. Let's do a roll off. Just another straight deception check versus... Yep. Ugh, ten. He got an eleven. We just eye each other for an awkward <laughs> amount of time. <laughs> yep. And I, okay, like, but Nathan, we are meeting in Ricksport, aren't we? What? Or we just said we'd find each other. Hmm. Um. I mean, I, I am, I am, I am misleading him. I'm, I, I right, am. Right. You're, you're him. actively misleading him, and he's aware of that. As to, as to whether you were supposed to reunite in Ricksport, I think that might have been the plan. I haven't re-listened to the Tagal episode in a little while, but yeah, you, you kind of lock eyes and eye socket for a little while, and uh, he says. Nar, you, you have something else in Rigsport, don't you? Some other reason. We, I do. Um, and I am not telling you everything, um, Ethan, and I appreciate your uh, Edward. discretion. That's what I said. And I hope that you understand. It's probably better if you don't know, but if you'd like to know, I will tell you. But uh, plausible deniability and everything. Do you want to know why? I rather would. I rather would like to know why. Jack and myself have business in Ricksport. Okay. Yar. I, we have a friend who was taken by, wow, that's been a while. Riptide? Riptide. Riptide. There it is. Riptide. <laughs> um, we have a friend who was taken by Riptide, and we fear for his safety. And I know that you already have some sort of animosity with Thousand Tooth Tom, and I can assure you, my discretion in saying that you are the one who brought me to Ricksport. I don't want to start any trouble for you, but we do. Jack and myself and our crew have also had a run in with Thousand, Thousand Tooth Tom, and we're not letting it go. Mm. Yar, well, you do realize he's a dangerous man. As I said, he owns the city. I understand that. Now, this friend, uh,. Had a run-in with with Riptide, found himself on the wrong side of Riptide. Hmm. Let's, uh, for for my own curiosity, you know, many many men of the sea know one another. What uh, what might this man's name be, or your friend? Now again, uh, we 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 are friendly now, but I know that the sea has a way of turning politeness into battle, Elijah, and I just. I, I worry about ser- sharing too many names and finding ourselves at an impasse. Uh, can we consider this a, a parlay for the duration of this journey? For the duration of this journey, Yar, you're, uh, out. no matter what you reveal, I have taken you aboard my ship as a guest that will be maintained until you depart from the ship on uh, your own terms. I would hold out my hand and uh, try to shake it or whatever fucking pirates do. Um bump elbows he will he will clasp your hand and uh, as he does so his his eyes definitely go down to your arm and then he like peers at your mask um his name was hudson swift yar the swifts i they they're a complicated family i don't know how much you know them personally i i have i have no animus toward the boy himself he's my best friend my longest friend he's your best and longest friend well uh friendship does uh count for quite a lot the boy seems nice. Uh, his father, his father's a, a pain. He's fucking terrible. His father's a pain in the ass. Uh, his, his grandpa. Wait, wait, wait. And he uh, bellows out, Scurvy Lily! Scurvy Lily! And then from the third ship, from the Yorkie Reef, she's a, a human woman steering that vessel. She looks over and she yells, uh, Aye, Captain. Uh, Hudson Swift. Uh, you, you knew the Swifts, yes? Ah, uh, yes, uh, we, we used to sail together under Captain Uduk. I, I, I know him. He's a good man. Yar, so, Zachariah, we, uh, we, we will take you... I mean, he was pretty fucking terrible, let's be clear about that. He was irresponsible, dishonest, he drank too much. And yet you're going to save him. He's your longest, oldest, best friend. He's my closest friend. But he's terrible. He's terrible. He's the worst. If he was just be more responsible, he would have just so... been more honest with us. Let let me get this straight. You were traveling with me, son, uh, with other adventurers as well, I, I presume. Yes. And uh, now you're on your own, uh, besides your uh, your undead crew there. 
to save your best and oldest friend. Well, there's a fairy on a corgi. Are you heartless? <laughs> do you not see how cute this is? <laughs> Yara, it, it, it do be pretty cute. Uh, you, your, uh, your fae spirit friends, uh, they, they do be quite adorable, Yar. Uh, but back to the point, you, you're sailing after your best and oldest friend who you think is terrible and irresponsible and just the worst. Yes, and this is mostly his fault. And uh, I'm a little confused, Zachary, okay. I must say. I, what is it? What are you confused about? <laughs> I mean, uh, it would seem to me that were I in your uh, position. Sure. Even though I, well, so you, h- how many people were you traveling with? Just so I can uh, speculate a little more accurately. Um, I, you're, you're beginning to know more about me than I know about you. Uh, but there were, uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four live people. Sorry, don't ignore that distinction. <laughs> uh, certainly. So, so you had five friends. You could save one of them, possibly. Or you could travel with the other four. Why, why are you choosing the one? We d- disagreed on direction. Uh, that's I, I, that was just a cr- <laughs> creative differences. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I... I I find oh god it's getting a little windy here. Um I I found that the mission, the the quest we embarked on was straying further and further away from what we agreed to. I I am young. I am only I, I mean I'm I'm hardly 2 years old and Hudson is my longest dearest friend and the meaning that I believed myself to have embarked under was to change the world. So your initial quest, it were to rescue this friend? Well, no. My initial quest was to change the world, to do away with debt and oppressive government and churches and (laughs) change the way that we... (laughs) Change the way that people live and change the way that people die. Uh, I wanted to change everything, but I have to ask you, if I can't save one person, what business do I have trying to save everyone? Yar, yar, that that do be a, a common quest among many, many uh, well-intentioned folk, but uh, I do believe changing the world might be a, a bit beyond any one person's reach. Change the people around you, change the areas around you, cause ripples. Oh, but I'm not one person, Edward. And I gesture to my my crew. No, no, you're not one person, Arya. You're one uh, undead. I eye him carefully. I would remind you we have a parlay. We we have a parlay. I'm not one to judge. You can live or die how you please, or unlive how you please. None of my concern. You're you're one of the nicest undead I've met. Must say. No, you are the nicest undead I've met. Most have tried to kill me. Now, have you gotten to know many of them? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, maybe you're the problem here. <laughs> uh, you uh, do be uh, brazen to criticize the captain of his own armada on his own ship, but I take your point. I take your point. I, I suppose I haven't really conversed with many undead before. Tis fair enough. Well, now, you being undead gives us a, a unique opportunity here. I've been uh, trying to figure out how to get you to Rigsport without myself mooring in Rigsport. Yet you don't need to breathe, right? Uh, no, I, I don't. We are, perfect. We'll get you within a day's walk and I'll throw you off the ship. I, my initial reaction is I don't want to be thrown off a ship, but I just pictured myself walking under the sea towards this city and it's actually pretty fucking cool. Yar, like, yar. If I do a uh, biography, I think that might be the book cover, if you know what I mean. Yar, I, I do think it'd be uh, pretty cool. You'd look badass under there if anyone could see ya. Uh, what about my crew? Do, are there are they not also undead? I feel like they should be fine as well. They are. Um, staying on the boat was my initial hope. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. We'll. I, I will just walk somewhere, try to find a cave or something for them to stay. And Gaily, uh, can Corgi fly, Gaily? Uh, yes, yes. And Corgi will turn into a sea turtle with the head of a Corgi and use its flippers to fly through the air. That is so fucking adorable. I feel such a dualism 
Edward looking upon my beautiful crew and this beautiful Fay. And I mean, they're both beautiful in their own way, aren't they? Um, okay, they so, okay, I, yeah, that's, that's fine with me. How do I? So I was hoping your first mate would have a spell maybe you're familiar with called sending. I'm guessing they don't though, or you probably would have just messaged Jack or he's been getting your messages and ignoring them, which has its own implications. Um, I don't know how to contact you after this, other than I guess I'm going to f seek out use of that spell in Ricksport. Do you know a mage in the city I can find? Uh, no, I, I have no contacts in that city. Okay, well... I, I am I am receptive to contact. I would love to know what you learn. I'd love to know if uh, if Jack has made his way there. I I fear for him if he does, frankly. I'd like to know if you can find your, uh, your friend, Hudson. Right, um... I will, I guess I will just assure you that when I find use of the ability to communicate with my, with, with Jack and the rest of my party, I will also uh, update you on pertinent details surrounding Jack with his blessing. I will let him know you're trying to contact him. Yar, sounds reasonable. I'll take a message. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the sail south toward Rigsport takes a few days on the second night so the you you left on the first night on the second night there is a terrible storm but thanks to uh, both a skilled crew and uh, the uh, magical capabilities of the first mate who is a walrus folk named uh, panos um he's able to quell the worst of the storm to keep the waves a little bit more calm uh, in your immediate vicinity I don't suppose you experience seasickness in any form, so you're probably just clattering around as the ships kind of rise and fall. Right. Yeah, but I mean, the the ships are a little bit battered. They have to replace a couple sails afterwards, but they have that kind of storage in the main hull, so they're well equipped for travel on the sea during uh, the stormy seasons. Oh, I made another medicine check against uh, DC Intermit. Oh, sorry, that had my proficiency on it and it should not have so that is actually an 18 an 18 which i think still yeah that still saves yeah so your con is down by three go ahead and do one more as uh since you have several days on the boat okay another 21 or sorry another 18 i just did it <laughs> <Yeah>. again <laughs> yeah yeah so you're completely cured up your con is down by four but over the next four days it will go up by one until it's back to its original okay and uh Given that you are on the boat for four days, or what is that, 96 hours, I think, um, your bone rot is halfway completely cured. So your con is only down by a total of two. Got it. When it comes time for you to walk the plank. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yar, well, uh, Zachariah, I do think this be it. Thank you for the... Uh... Oh, you know, let me ask you this. Edward and the crew would have invited you to play dice with bone knuckles. How do you feel about that? Zachariah is very intelligent and not very wise. So I feel like he would look at the game from a purely scholarly point. And if it was truly random, he would not participate. If there was any skill involved, he would probably think he could beat it. Okay. I was... I was more interested in his reaction to seeing, like, toys made out of bones. Oh, I fully approve of that. That is <laughs> okay. amazing. I really, I think that's the first step. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's not a hybrid car, but it is recycling your plastic. You know what I mean? Like, I, I fully approve. <laughs> Nar, I, I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw <laughs> I, I fully approve of this, and I really appreciate it. I would just like to point out, I mean... Uh, would you use a bone club as a weapon? Yeah, if I had nothing else. Sure. And what if the bone club had feelings and could swing itself? Would you use that? Uh, nar. Okay, well, I, th there's a line somewhere. We just disagree where it's at. But for the most part, we agree. Yeah. So he gets you within a day and a half of uh, Rick's port. And then he says, well, uh, Zachariah, it's been nice. I do believe this is, uh, this is your stop, as it were. Just... Uh, stay the course, you know, it's due, due south of us. Just walk until you find the Great Continental Shelf, climb the shelf, and then uh, you'll be in Rick's port. Easy peasy. Yeah. Um, I will 
try to get in contact with you again. I appreciate the, the trip. Um, yeah, it was, it was good meeting you. It was nice to meet you as well, Zachariah. Best of luck. And I very unceremoniously command my horde to just walk off. They don't dive. They don't jump. They just literally walk off into the water. And then I do the same. Yep. When you are tossed off the boat, Zachariah, you and your skeletal friends sink down, down, down. It's really surreal, descending at a rapid rate, but slower than a true fall. It's like the air, it's like if you were falling through air, the air is thick and swirls and burbles around you. And finally, your feet smack down on sticky, silty ground that sucks and squelches and forces you to move mechanically at half speed. It's like the silt is up to your knee each time you step. As you set out, you feel that if you were alive, this would be a tremendous leg workout if you had muscles. <laughs> As it is, you and your undead party just keep marching on. Some great distance overhead, probably five or six hundred feet, the sunlight flickers through the surface of the water. At times, this is clear. You can look up and see sparkles and ripples as if gazing out over the sea, only this time from underneath it. At other times, it's just a hazy, diffuse blue high overhead. You walk on and on, and afternoon blurs into night as the great blue light overhead grows darker and eventually blackens to utter blinding nearly maddening darkness, and yet on you march. Hours pass, and very, very faintly you hear booming overhead, a ripple of white light across the surface, followed immediately by another soft boom. Lightning and thunder, you realize. As the lightning intensifies, you can see more clearly for a time, a flash of white overhead, but this time there's a dark shadow. When you look up, there's an enormous silhouette, maybe a boat, couldn't be one of the Yorkies, but it's got a similar heft to one of those massive galleons. But then, with another lightning flash, you realize that what you thought was a ship was a fin. A gargantuan bulk, an enormous slithering mass floating through the waters overhead you, with six ship-sized fins propelling it forward. Jesus. Luckily, it pays you no mind. The shadow passes overhead, but it is nevertheless absolutely horrifying. Darkness, perforated by soft flashes of light, marks your journey for some time thereafter. And finally, as the black of night is beginning to give way to the vestiges of an eternal blue dawn, you come upon a great shelf that looms before you. Climbing it is not so much a physical challenge as a mental one. Uh, given the buoyancy of, of bones and water, uh, it's like you grab a hold of the stone, you kick off and float for a short time and then grab again. Basically a one-way like Mario wall jump. And uh, it is shortly after noon when you breach the waters at the beaches of Rixport, soaked, as it were, to the bone. <laughs> that was weird, right? That wasn't like, oh, I see that's a Finicus Maximus. Didn't know they were in this water. Like, that's fucking weird. Something that huge. Something that huge is unusual, yeah. Okay. Gigantic, like, boat-sized or maybe twice the size of a typical boat. Probably a bit more common. I would say, given your historical knowledge, you would know that this thing is... Or that a typical sea monster might be two or three times the size of a boat, but not like eight or ten times its size. All right. All right. So in Rixport, you can see that there. First clearly... thing I want to do is make an etching of what I saw. Okay. Sorry. Just want to. Yeah, you can do so. The uh, first thing you would notice after that is that Rixport has clearly had a several days of festival. There's like broken bottles, not just in the alleys, but like on the main streets as well. There are streamers that have been rained on and have that kind of like wet limp tissue paper kind of texture hanging, like like someone got toilet papered, but with multicolor teepees covering like the houses, the floor of the alleys. There's confetti, there's vomit. It's, it's a whole mess. It's like, like, um, Having not been to New Orleans during Mardi Gras, forgive me, New Orleansians, if this is not accurate, but I imagine it's like Mardi Gras New Orleans right now. Okay. I imagine I would have only... Oh, man. I probably have no idea what's going on. I can't imagine the texts that I studied had any mention of, like, holidays or celebrations. Like, I probably have no concept of what is happening here. I probably just think this town is weird. Probably so. Go ahead and make a history check at disadvantage. Look for an 18, given the texts that you've studied. A 13. Okay. Yeah, as far as, far as you know, this is business as normal in Rixport. What a strange town. 
handful of people that are clearly hungover or drunk or passed out in the alleys or on the streets. What is the uh, purpose of these these uh, these flags and uh, uh, strings hanging from everything? Are you asking? Are those for birds? Are you asking a person? Yeah, one of the hungover people. Oh, oh it's, it's a celebration from a uh, 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 birthday, or not the birthday, the coronation, I think. I never remember which. which. Anyway, it's it's King uh, Ricard Toldan the third, and so, celebrating for him. Celebrating like a funeral? No, no, no. Like I, I think it was his uh, anniversary of, of him becoming king. Oh, I think it was. What's the, what's the significance of that? Uh, it's it's just when when you're supposed to drink a lot and say like hail to the king, uh, long may he reign, all all those uh, important things. Okay, hold on one second. Uh, hail to the king, long may he reign. So that's like a traditional birthday greeting. Uh, birthday coronation, I suppose funeral as well. Uh huh. It, okay. Yeah, it's just kind of the oh. ritual we do. Oh, I'm so sorry. Speaking of rituals, uh, hi there. How are you doing? How's the weather? He blinks. What? He looks up. Let me give you a handout of Ricksport so you can kind of see from a bird's eye view as well. Uh, he'll say the uh, weather I think is, is fine, but to you, Zachariah, while the sky is clear, there's just kind of a haze of like factory filth in the air. Beautiful. Yep. I love the ambiance here. It's quite wonderful. I'm a I'm a I, I, I'm a purveyor of stinking clouds myself. Mine is much thicker than this. I do you know who's responsible for the the haze? I could I could give them some tips and tricks for increasing the density and the you know what I mean the obs- obscuration of it. I'm not sure. I love what... that the name of the fort is Rick's Fort. I don't know. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. I thought that was a nice touch. Um, he, I, I don't really know what you're talking about. Uh, I think the air just looks like it always does, except right after a fresh rain. I guess it's a little bluer then. And quick question. You left your, your skeleton, your undead crew, your skeleton crew in the water, right? They're like under the, fo- under the pier. Yeah, that actually makes more sense than my idea. So I'm going to go with that. Okay. I was going to find a cave um, or something, but yeah, under the water is actually really cool. I like the idea of us standing on this dock talking with 12 people just down there, sham- like just standing. Yeah. Yeah. Like on the image I have popped out here, they're probably under the like wharf that connects to the mainland because uh, that's just like harder for them to get spotted. Okay. Well, I appreciate your, your time. Um uh, I, I have to ask uh, a very delicate question. Are you okay with delicate questions? And I would flash him a couple gold pieces. At this hour? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I am. Yep, righto. I am, I have some business with a local organization uh, that might operate under this symbol. And I show them a picture of like the shark tooth, I think is there's Riptide's symbol. That would be Riptide Simple. And I saw that and etched that when we were dealing with the fake symbol. Sapphire. Sapphires, yeah. Yeah. Um, y- yes. Yeah, the, yep. He just kind of yep. nods. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Where would I begin seeking out an appointment with them? Oh, I would, I'd start at the, uh, the, the wharf in on the uh, it's just down there a little bit ways down the wharf it's the inn right next to the the main piers uh start there talk to the uh I, I don't I can't remember which which barmaid but I know one of the barmaids is a uh, uh, applicant taker what do you call those she she vets the the people before they get in with the the uh other people mm, I see interesting I'm having a memory that <laughs> I'm suddenly remembering that Azure works for us and we just kind of left her. Yes. Um, I wonder how Azure's doing. I, I look up. I wonder how Azure's doing. Yeah, I do wonder how Azure's doing. Who's Azure? All right. Um, I toss him one gold piece because that wasn't very good information. He bites it, nods and pockets it. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Long may you reign. Goodbye. Long long may he reign. And he'll Long may you reign. Saunter. He? Me? He. He. The king. Oh, okay. Righto. Cheerio. Goodbye. He'll stumble away. And I will head to the inn. All right. And uh, um, 
between you and the inn, there are quite a few like cart merchants that are hawking their wares. Um, some purveyors of trinkets, of fried like beer battered fish, uh, London pub style. And uh, I suppose you have olfactory senses because you have all of the typical humanoid senses. Right. So I just have to say, I know that I'm the weird one, but have you ever thought about the idea of uh, deboning something and then battering it and deep frying it? <laughs> like, I just want to be clear Fair. that I'm not the only weird one. Yeah, well, as you as you make your way through the uh, merchants, you do hear a familiar voice. Buy my potatoes! Buy my potatoes now! We've got a special discount! Two for the price of one! First purchase only! Are you fucking kidding me? Zebediah? Is that you? Biblybrook! Yeah, Zebediah, uh, how are you doing, Babblybrook? A body nook. It is lovely to see you again! What brings you to Rigsport? How the fuck are you here? I... That's just where I am to sell potatoes today. What have you been up to? I've been learning the true meaning of Christmas. Yes. <laughs> I body na body na buddy. Yes, Adaya. Um, where are you going after this? Oh, wherever the wind takes me, wherever the cosmic wind bre- breathed by the eldritch gods of the multiverse sends me. I just have this weird feeling. <laughs> I don't want to cause any. I don't want to cause any like rifts in the time space continuum, but wherever you wind up next, I just want you to know that that is is not your in. <laughs> it belongs to someone else, okay? <laughs> I. How do you know about that? Oh, you. I. <laughs> I'm so confused. Being around you gives me this aura of I'm confused about what is past and present and future. Okay, I, I actually am happy to see you. I need two things, and I need you to cooperate, and I need you to listen to me very carefully that this debt will be paid in full, perhaps even with a bonus, but I have two very specific needs. Can you help me? Yeah, yes, of course. I need access to a spell, and I would flip through my book. Uh, it's it's known as the sending spell. Do you have any potato phones? I, I don't have any potato phones, no, but um, I can cast sending. I, I also have a contact in town who is capable of such magic as well. Yikes. And I need a way to use a teleportation circle. I, while I myself travel in a more unique fashion, my, my contact should be able to help you out there. I do believe. I would greatly appreciate their information. Buddy Nick will glance around kind of furtively, and then he'll lean forward and he'll say, So... It is off the books, you understand. Has um, he's been evading taxes for some time, so his his inn is uh, he, he he runs a covert inn. Okay. Pretty cheap. Got it. It's it's, it's cheap. It's a little bit crummy, but it's because um, it's uh, you know he he's getting around some loopholes with management of this particular town. Understood. So go onto the uh, the mainland uh, behind one of the warehouses. There's like a little uh, alleyway. And he will describe in greater detail than I am at this particular moment. But, um, you know, look for look for the oak tree that's been half burnt, but half of it is still alive. Um, in that alleyway, with that tree in sight, there's a crate that's actually a doorway. If you pull it out and walk down, there's a little cellar there, and that cellar is part of a kind of an underground network in it. I would go there, talk to the... Uh, if he's not at the bar, he's usually at the bar, but if he's not, ask for Eddard Emerald Pine. He's the manager. He's the uh, owner of, of the World's End Inn. He is uh, quite a powerful uh, magician himself. Okay, got it. Uh, Emilio... Uh, Eddard. Eddard... What was a Stone, right? Sapphire? Oak? Emerald Pine. Emerald? Emerald Pine. Where do you people come up with these names? And have you ever seen this... And I show him the etching I made of the creature. Like, imagine this is, like, the size of, like, a warehouse. Well, several warehouses. Uh, no. And at least not in my memory. Fascinating. Certainly. Have you ever seen that? No, just curious. Okay. Would you like to buy a potato? I want to know what your fucking deal is, is what I want to know. But this doesn't seem like the time. Oh, also, I, I, I recently acquired a, a magical item that, if you're interested in, it's going for 15000 right now. It's a helm of teleportation. I I need that. So, do you have a layaway plan? Uh, can no. I lease it Cash from you? Front. No. I, I can give you, like, 
I, I need you to understand I'm going to be alive for a long time so I could give you a gold a year for 15,000 years. No. <laughs> and, and I feel like you could just go forward in time and collect the money now and everyone would be fine. I, I appreciate your thoughts, uh, Zedidaya, but uh, no, again, talk if you if you need a, the Helm of Teleportation, we can talk again later, assuming I haven't sold it to another adventurer. But, um... All right. Well, thanks, Bobby. Yeah, I guess. Um, do you do you remember the the uh, the the gentleman I was traveling with before? His name was Hudson Swift. Do you remember him? No. No. No, I don't. Do you remember me? I, I remember you. I remember uh, Mordecai. Mordecai, yeah. Uh, wonder how Mordecai is doing. Okay. Um, do you? Okay. Where wherever the wind? T- I, uh, okay. I I have so many questions and I don't know how to ask them. Uh, goodbye, Billy. We'll. S- Let's meet each other again someday. I'm fucking sure of it. Goodbye. I would head straight there because in my mind, this place seems like a good place both to get the items and magics that I need and also ask about Thousand Tooth Tom. And if Thousand Tooth Tom owns the city and this person is in legal trouble, that in my mind means this is like a different faction of some sort. That's my logic that is going behind me heading straight there. I, I understand that I might not understand what's going on, but neither does Zachariah, so. Right, okay. So you make your way. Uh, Body Nook's instructions are pretty clear. Uh, Zachariah is directionally challenged, so it takes him a little bit longer than it might otherwise. <laughs> on your way, as you get further away from the war. I and- love that. Like, if I had a map, I would be fine, right? Because I'm highly intelligent, but having to follow someone else's directions with landmarks would be my worst nightmare. I would be lost so much. Right. On on your way, though, or part of part of what gets you tur- turned around is you see this magical, like, billboard. It is a... Uh, you're, you know, you're a little bit further inland at this point. You're on the mainland instead of on one of those little, like, islands that's connected to everything by bridges. And you're in a town square with this... Uh, this like big wooden sign that has a smooth stone surface mounted on it. And uh, as uh, you, you see a, p- a bunch of people gathered up around it and it appears to be enchanted to show different like sources of information pertinent to um, West Danica from reporters around the, the world. And uh, as one interview is winding down, you see uh, the uh, earth sign. I'm not uh, looking at the interview. I wanna, I'm looking at the projector. <laughs> Is there a person? What? How there, is this? I, uh, you can, you can. I need this. <laughs> I'm literally, I'm, I'm starting a, a geopolitical religious revolution. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Fucking yeah. advertising. You know how much right. I need this technology, <laughs> Nathan? You just revealed to me, like, like, I, yes, I need to know everything about this. I would spend way too long. Okay, yeah. So it's gonna be like nighttime by the time you get to the tavern, but. I'll have you make an arcana check to learn more about this item in just a minute, but first let me describe, like, as you're walking up to it, you (laughs) see the Ursine features of the reporter named Gregory popping up. Oh god, got it. He taps his microphone, he says, now recording, and then he launches into an explanation of how he narrowly escaped Cliffs Bay, how everything is terrible and he would recommend that no reporter tries to actually land in Cliffs Bay to report on the events but there was a lot of violence. There's active, open uh, hostility between the Westanikin and, uh, what do you call it, uh, Taiyangi's navies. Several ships on both sides have sunk, which means that uh, pirates and uh, salvage crews are just chomping at the bits to get in there and get all of that treasure, but they're waiting until it gets a little bit, and until the hotspot cools down a little bit. Uh, Gregory has since traveled to uh, Shikyodai and has been reporting along some of the um, ports there. Shikyodai is an island nation that is not under the full control of Taiyang, but they have a lot of kind of political tension as they rely heavily on Taiyang for kind of economic support. And he mentions that aberrations have been popping up in and around a smaller Shikyodai town in the countryside, and that he has heard in reference to that town, the name Zugjagonku. Mm. Could you give me the name of that small town one more time? Okay, he will refer to the name of the town as the Red Lotus, which is its name translated into West Anakin. Okay. There is so much fucking information overload right now. Oh my <laughs> god. 
but clearly the priority is this major image thing. Yeah, go ahead and make an arcana check. <laughs> this <laughs> this billy board, as it were. Uh, 19. Nice, yeah. So it is basically a sending stone, but with uh, both audio and visual. You can tell from kind of studying it and studying the runes around uh, the image that's being displayed that it is linked with five uh, smaller sending stones. If you think back to when Gregory interviewed you in Cliffs Bay, he had a kind of tech assistant that was carrying around a miniaturized mirror that was capturing the image. So you can assume that a few weeks ago you were actually displayed on this billboard in that interview. So the billboard is not... Is There are runes on the billboard, and the billboard is connected to a sending stone. To five sending stones. Five sending stones. At what contr- Okay, I would like to copy the runes. Okay, um, you can do so. You can tell as you're doing so that the runes are basically how the sending stones are- how the individual particular sending stones are linked to this billboard. So I would- I, I basically need to be able to- if I were to duplicate this, I'd need to get one of those sending stones, and I would need to put these runes on a 